we are reading Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Once again, I've forgotten to make a poll for the next book. At some point, I'll actually remember to do that. I always remember now at this point in the stream that I haven't done it. Uh, but we will be doing that soon uh, and taking suggestions for what the next book should be because this has probably not got an awful lot left in it, to be honest. Um, wow, the last chapter is super long. It's a doozy. Uh, yeah. So far, we've had one murder, one mysterious death after shock, and... Mr. Hyde has disappeared, and Mr. Dr. Jekyll is being very weird, and Mr. Utterson is extremely confused by the whole situation and very concerned for his friend. The next chapter is called Incident at the Window. Should we just dive right in, eh? I reckon. Let's do it. Are you ready for this? It's exciting stuff. <clears throat> It chanced on Sunday, when Mr. Utterson was on his usual walk with Mr. Enfield, that their way lay once again through the by street, and that when they came in, oh, because we jumped right. <laughs> that was very confusing. I was like, "What is he splooshing at me for?" Because we jumped right in. All right, I'm going to start the chapter again now because I was like, "What?" That was distracting. Anyway, here we go. <laughs> Incident at the window. It chanced on Sunday, when Mr. Utterson was on his usual walk with Mr. Enfield, that their way lay once again through the by street, and that when they came in front of the door, both stopped to gaze on it. Well, said Mr. Enfield, that story's at an end at least. We shall never see more of Mr. Hyde. I hope not, said Mr. Utterson. Did I ever tell you that I once saw him and shared your feeling of repulsion? It was impossible to do the one without the other, returned Enfield. And, by the way, what an ass you must have thought me not to know that this was a back way to Dr. Jekyll's. It was partly your own fault that I found it out, even when I did. So you found it out, did you, said Utterson. But if that be so, we may step into the court and take a look at the windows. To tell you the truth, I am uneasy about poor Jekyll, and even outside I feel as if the presence of a friend might do him good. The court was very cool and a little damp, and full of premature twi twilight although the sky high up overhead was still bright with sunset. The middle one of the three windows was halfway open, and sitting close beside it, taking the air with an infinite sadness of mien like some disconsolate prisoner, Utterson saw Dr. Jekyll. "'What, Jekyll?' he cried. "'I trust you are better.' "'I am very low, Utterson,' replied the doctor drearily. "'Very low. It will not last long, thank God.' "'You stay too much indoors,' said the lawyer. You should be out, whipping up the circulation like Mr. Enfield and me. This is my cousin, Mr. Enfield, Dr. Jekyll. Come now, get your hat and make a quick turn with us. You are very good, sighed the other. I should like to very much, but no, 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 it is quite impossible. I dare not. But indeed, Utterson, I am very glad to see you. This is really a great pleasure. I would ask you and Mr. Enfield up, but the place is really not fit. Why, then, said the lawyer good-naturedly, the best thing we can do is stay down here, and speak with you from where we are. That is just what I was about to venture to propose, returned the doctor with a smile. But the words were hardly uttered before the smile was struck out of his face and succeeded by an expression of such abject terror and despair as froze the very blood of the two gentlemen below. They saw it but for a glimpse, for the window was instantly thrust down, but that glimpse had been sufficient, and they turned and left the court without a word. In silence, too, they traversed the by-street and it was not until they had come into a neighbouring thoroughfare, where even upon a Sunday there were still some stirrings of life, that Mr. Utterson at last turned and looked at his companion. They were both pale, and there was an answering horror in their eyes. "'God forgive us! God forgive us!' said Mr. Utterson. But Mr. Enfield only nodded his head very seriously, and walked on once more in silence.'" 